Good morning, it's Lucina Stricco. We'll give folks just two more minutes if um, we expect anyone else to join the CNCF CI working group status update call today. Good morning. I'm going to try to share my screen here. Great. Everyone say that? Yeah, it looks good. Cool. Um, let's see. Lucina, can you post the um, notes for the CI, the link to the CI working group? Agenda notes. Yes. Thanks. Awesome. So I think that today, I'm trying to bring that up. The only thing I've seen was uh, update on the cross cloud CI. So we can give that. Um, we may have some other items, topics for next meeting. If you have some ideas for what you want to talk about, you can post in the that public um, CNCSCI working group agenda notes, just add yourself there for discussion. Cool. So, oh, and here they are. So there's the, this is the Zoom meeting. Hopefully it's gonna, it's changed a few times, the actual ID. So I would make sure and use, if you're going to a URL, um, use the short URL they have and that'll get you into the right place. This also lists on the public calendar, second and fourth Tuesday. So from the CrossCloud CI project, um, we want to uh, go over the current ONAP integration. So we're, we're working with the ONAP project, which is a Linux Foundation project, to integrate with their um, CI systems and do some testing of their service orchestrator component, um, eventually adding more. Um, so the 
current goal for the initial integration is testing one component and whatever the minimal requirements are for that. <clears throat> we'll be trying to use the upstream um, artifacts that they've provided from their, uh, their build system and their registry and then try to deploy those on top of Kubernetes and run E to E test. Let's see who all is on the call. I'll do a quick overview of the cross cloud CI unless, uh, is there anyone on the call who hasn't, is not familiar with the cross cloud CI project? Mm, okay, Hello. I'll do a quick, go ahead. Yes. Hello. Um, my name is Francois Thur. I think we met already during the KubeCon at Austin. I attend today and maybe I will attend next uh, a meeting, but my focus is typically on core DNS. And I yes. was expecting to have um, to have a better or better or something we can extend the integration test of core DNS. So that's why I attend today. In fact, I don't want to interrupt your uh, usual agenda. I just want to have someone to talk to on how we can go ahead with core DNS. Absolutely. Yeah, I recall our conversations. Good to hear from you. And I think the uh, some of the integration that we're doing with ONAP will relate to what we want to do uh, on the with Core DNS for what we had talked about previously on the EDE test. I know there are several ways of testing, including as a plugin for Kubernetes running standalone, and we had talked about several ways that we could test um, and We'll definitely follow up after this. Let's go over some of the ONAP stuff, and then maybe if we have some time in this call, we could uh, talk a little bit about the current status of ED tests and core DNS. Does that sound good? Okay, thank you very much, yes. Okay, great. So um, cross-cloud system, the cross-cloud CI system, it's, split into three main parts, build, builds, uh, cloud provisioning, and then app deployment, which does the EDE testing. And all of these parts can be used independently. So for systems that, uh, projects that don't have their own build system, we can, I'm gonna kind of skip down in here. Um, these slides will be available if, for a, a further overview. Let's see, um, I think I went too far. So um, on the build system itself, I can bring this up, CNCF-CI, GitLab, CNCF-CI. The build system we can mirror in the project's um, source code and do builds and compiles. Um, so for say Core DNS, we're just running the upstream build um, scripts, make or whatever it may be, depending on it, and then creating those artifacts and pushing them up. And then once we have those, we'll do, we'll be using uh, our own uh, provisioning for Kubernetes and we provision the different clouds. And then once we have those, we'll take the artifacts from the builds on each project and deploy those and deploy potentially an EDE test container or whatever we need to do to run the EDE test. So for ONAP itself, let me go to a different environment here. What we're doing is we are using, and we have some builds running right now because this is in progress, for the build status, what we're doing is we are pulling in the information from the ONAP as CI system. So they use a combination of Jenkins and um, custom chef deploy scripts. Um, they have a nexus for their registry, container registry, and some other items. And for the stable, 
release, what we have here, V11, which is what they call Amsterdam, we can, their releases are uh, not too frequent, so we actually can um, specify those like we do for all the other ones and say there's a new release. It's going to go and uh, check that that's available in the registry, make sure it's downloadable um, to the system externally and does some other validation so that we can use that artifact in later stages. Um, for the, you know, we've had a problem here. Maybe check that out. So for the, let's see, it looks like there was a, when it went out for the, the nightly release is what they have. So they have nightly builds of their master. And what we're doing here is we're actually going and looking at those nightly builds on Jenkins and we check the status. We actually had a failure. It's showing that there was a failure on their last nightly. So this is whatever they ran yesterday. And we can see we tied that into their commits for their um, the service orchestrator project here, which is a mirror of Garrett, which is what they use internally. And they had some errors here, and that's what caused the build. So we're not running the build, but what we're trying to do is integrate with whatever they're doing so that we can update here. If it does pass, we're going to set all those six success, and then we continue on and um, validate the container that we figure out dynamically what container did they create based on this, and then they registered that into their, or they uploaded that to the registry. And we'll make sure that's available. And then we create all of our pinning configuration for both of the releases that we can then use for app deployments and run those um, deploys of the containers. Once that is complete, then we're ready to do um, the E to E test, and that's part of the app deployment phase. So if we in these pipelines here. Um, oh, actually, I clicked on the wrong one. Go back. So if I look at, say, Linkerd, there's an app deploy, and that didn't work. What's happening here? Denver, let me know if I'm going to the wrong area. Looking at some live stuff here. Okay, so the app deploy phase, <clears throat> in this stage, we actually run not we run the actual deployment using Helm to put the application on Kubernetes. And then by default, what we're running is we'll deploy a E to E container and then run those uh, tests that are within the, the E to E container. For ONAP, they actually have, and this isn't something I can show you because we're in the midst of doing this, but they have their own um, test framework and, and they use something called robot and have a large set of tests robots a piece of software that allows you to define test and you can split those out into different files if you're familiar to cucumber and um, our spec it's it's similar to other things except for at a kind of a higher higher level defining the test, and then you go in and um, implement those. So we're going to be use, utilizing those for our test, and we're doing a subset of those tests that are just specific to ONAP. So once we get done with the app deploy for the different releases, we'll be focused on the, um, the actual E to E test and running those containers. And hopefully not having to do much modification. It looks like they go through and um, do most of the health checks and, and validation all the way down to the database for the service orchestrator. And if possible, we'll be able to use those as is, and that would allow us to <coughs> um, let ONAP run the, the actual um, <clears throat> the tests themselves. And I think that's the main thing. So let's say we're having 
Let's bring this up. Here's the, the main ticket here. We've kind of split these out, but um, if anyone's interested to come and look as the progress goes. So from a core DNS perspective, this project, the ONAP integration that we're doing is um, quite a bit more complex, I think, than what we were looking at for core DNS. <clears throat> and I think if we look at what we're doing um, for ONAP as kind of a reference, we could probably go with something even simpler. Um, if, if we can define, it sounds like we have the three different areas um, that we could test. So um, I'd be happy to switch to that if there's no more questions about ONAP, the ONAP integration. <clears throat> itself. Does anyone have any comments or questions on what we're doing here? Okay. Let me, I guess, let me finish this out and then maybe we can focus on do a switch to core DNS. So maybe another topic. So we're going to, after finishing, um, or I should say, besides the ONAP um, integration that we're working on and currently the app deployments, we will be enabling the IBM Cloud and soon, and then OpenStack is. Um, we're hoping to have that up soon after. We're collaborating with one of the OpenSAC folks to get that integration. Uh, FluentD is in testing, so that should go active pretty soon. We have a face-to-face -face, um, CICD workshop. Some of y'all may be on that. Um, that's in LA just before ONS. And then we're gonna, we're helping at the CNCF booth. We'll be demoing um, the cross cloud CI project and some other items during ONS. And we're planning on attending KubeCon in May. That's in Copenhagen. Okay. Any questions before we switch over and maybe talk a little bit about talk a little bit about uh, core DNS and AD tests? Okay. Do you want to give a status update on where where things are with ED tests on uh, core DNS themselves? Um, um, yes, I can. <clears throat> so, sure. Core DNS. Um, we, uh, in fact, we have two kind of tests plus the Kubernetes end-to-end -end test. So. Um, if you go, yes, in core DNS, so when each time we make a commit, there is a CI that starts and that run kind of tests that are defined in this repository. But we have also, if you click on core DNS, we have a core DNS CI repository that run a bunch of tests we did not want it to put inside, uh, directly inside our code. But if you go to, no, sorry, to GitHub core DNS CI, Here you are in coordinates slash coordinates, so yes, slash CI. Oh. 
Yes, there we go. This one. Yes. So these are a bunch of tests not that we are running that we we have a specific environment packet IO to run these integration tests that are mostly not not only but mostly testing uh, the interface between core DNS and Kubernetes. But it is something that is aside of the regular Travis CI, if you want. And uh, we are maintaining this part. It's only on one uh, platform um, packet. And then you have end-to-end -end tests, but these one are the one of Kubernetes. So maybe we don't need to uh, to take them as part of core DNS. What happened is core DNS is going as the default DNS service of Kubernetes. Uh, core DNS itself is, is a DNS service that is not linked at the beginning to Kubernetes, but it has a kind of uh, plugin for Kubernetes. And we are very, um, uh, how do you say that, very, very attentive to, to, to make it work with Kubernetes. So that's why we have deployed a specific CI. And then we will, we want to extend this CI to have some long run tests, some performance tests. So I try to know, to not overlap with your work or, or to consolidate with your work. So uh, because you are deploying in several, um, in, in you are already deploying on several uh, type of container or several platform, I would like to take advantage of this deployment to make run our CI into your environment or your deployed uh, already deployed environment. So my, my question is, how do we tie together? Is that clear enough? Yeah, thanks for the overview. Um, I think what we'll need to do is, I guess, uh, work with you to uh, try out this CI and fully understand it. I'm posting a ticket um, that we previously had and we wanted to follow up on for yes. uh, cross cloud CI. So yes, there was a ticket and I had a, I had a, um, a comment maybe in January after our meeting on on KubeCon. Yeah. And, but looks like it was not on the wrong. It was on the wrong. Uh, um, location and and someone just moved yeah, to the problem. Yeah, yeah, there was some reorganization as we we're releasing some of the other components. So I think we, that was probably still a good start to pick back up um, with what you had put there, and then maybe reviewing um, this ticket, and then saying, I don't know if if all parts of the CI testing that y'all are doing are applicable. It'd be good though to see what's uh, reusable. Um, and yes. that's, I was reading it in another window here, but I think we could schedule maybe a call after we've reviewed and um, it looks, is this something that we should be able to run directly? Is there anything that we need uh, to know? No, yes, that right now that is, we have a, um, I understand, Is I, in fact I am, making the link here it's not me that that did that that work but that uh -huh. is a kind of of permanent system that is just waiting hook event to run to take yeah. a new a new build and and run in an existing environment so it's not exactly how you are doing you are doing a deployment of kubernetes i understand or deployment of something and then run the test but um I don't know. We we are open to find what uh, what what is the best to 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 keep on your um, organization. But what what I want to know is how where do I write some tests to make them run in your environment, for example, at first, and then can we share this one? If if there is a way that these tests are 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 running in your environment, then we will avoid to maintain the this environment for our tests if they are already run on some other environment. So that is, I think the tying part can be talked. What we can do is if okay. you can read this document, read the, the my ticket, and then I will, uh, you, you can either add to, to, to the, 
when you're ready, just say it on the issue on uh, cross, uh, sorry, the cross cloud issue, CI issue 23. And I will, we will schedule a meeting with also Chris, however, this guy here that did this, all this work. He's working with me. Okay. Sounds good. So in general, how the tests work are, we'll try, we will figure out what we need to run. So if, if you had something as simple as make test, if you had a task runner of some type, then we would add that to the um, deployment. So during the app deploy, we would have a, a job um, that starts and it's the only thing it would run would be say make test or make E to E test. Or if there's a script that we run, that's fine. Essentially, we need to know how do you run your test, and then we add those tasks into um, that that phase. So I was I was showing earlier the the pipelines here. So um, oh, right here. So when we get to after this app deploy, and we're going to run this E to E test uh, job. We will define that job based on whatever information that you have. So if okay. that meant, oh, let me go back here. So if what, what I would anticipate is whatever runs whenever you add this slash integration in the comment for the PR, that's yes. triggering some set of commands. It seems like that might be a good place to start whatever command this triggers to run. So that's probably in here somewhere. Um, there's test deployment, yes. test Kubernetes. So there's probably, yeah, let's see, like this test Kubernetes. So we probably don't need this fetch core DNS. So there's some other things, build Docker that we're handling. So it's probably this test Kubernetes um, job which looks like right here, this line 75 might be it. So potentially this is it and all we need. And then if that's the case, then what we can do is take whatever um, the needed parts are. And this, this looks like the code is all here. Um, so it's, it looks like we'd package up this test and then we would want our um, job to then run uh, the make test or make test K8s. And that should be a good starting place. That's kind of what I'm thinking. But that's generally what we'll do. We'll figure out what does the project currently do for EDE test, if anything, and then try to run those um, okay. as is. So if that works, that's fine. Um, the, Thing, concerns that I'd have are what are the requirements for this to run? Does it expect for the um, for the core DNS to be set up in a certain way? Um, I see some stuff on the, this is the repo here, but if we looked at, okay, the build, so is there anything specific for core DNS that we need to know when we're deploying core DNS? Should anything be started up? But I think this is a good start. We can take a look at um, running Go test from this repo on our uh, Kubernetes deploy with uh, Core DNS. Okay. So, but in your, if you go back to your, um, um, mm -hmm. so your your workflow for the test, is there something to deploy before? It is something that happened during the end-to-end task no the container you deploy the compile app deploy yeah what is app so container? so we're going to deploy both a container the a container that has core dns and whatever containers are needed for to run the application and then we've um, normally been deploying a container which has the ede test and then we run those tests, which is often the, the start command for when the container um, starts up, that's usually what just immediately starts. Um, if for 
a project that doesn't need a separate container, or maybe it, it should run the ED tests that are um, in the actual application uh, container, we could do that as well. So I'm not sure exactly what y'all have. It may be that rather than deploying an EDE container separately, and then that starts up and runs, it may be that during the EDE job, we actually go out to the core DNS container and run something that was already built and inserted into the app, app container. Okay, but when you say Kubernetes, when you test core DNS, you always uh, launch a Kubernetes container also? Because core DNS We is always run, uh, so are, are you referring to what do we do to test Kubernetes? No, no, no. In the case of core DNS, you say, oh, we run. So uh -huh. um, we, we, we use the Kubernetes container, but that means in, in case of core DNS, testing, you, you deploy your Kubernetes container or you deploy if we need. So after deploying, after we have Kubernetes up on all the clouds, uh, they're provisioned, then the next step is to deploy a container with core DNS. And that happens right here. So this is in the cross project. So. And then that gives us, like right here, we have a deployment to AWS for, and we deploy the actual a container that has core DNS, and that's then running on top of Kubernetes. So okay. I realized that core DNS could be a plugin for Kubernetes for its DNS. It can also be run independently just as a DNS server. Yes. Um, we're not testing all of those in one go right now. That's probably something that we need to look at, like all the different, I guess the different types of tests would require different deployments. So if we're gonna test Core DNS as a plugin for Kubernetes, rather than using another DNS server for Kubernetes, then we would need to do another set of tests and probably another deployment. Right now we're talking about core DNS running as a, a just an application independent um, yeah. of Kubernetes. Okay. But anyway, on, on Kubernetes side, so let's that is core DNS mm -hmm. itself as as a um, as a DNS service running in a in a in a pod is what you mean. But on Kubernetes side, you are running the end to end test of Kubernetes, I guess. If we are looking only the Kubernetes test you are doing, you are running the okay. end-to-end -end, dash test dash end-to-end. -end. Well, so what we had been running, and so this is what we need to talk to you about, what would be the different types of tests that we look at. What we were running was um, DNS test, your general DNS test, and not Kubernetes specific. Yeah, so we weren't okay. running test that are validating um, that Kubernetes can talk to core DNS. Okay, what, what I wanted this to- This may be uh, something that we need to do a follow-up call to dig in a little bit more, but yes. go ahead. No, what I, what I wanted to underline is core DNS as the DNS service of Kubernetes is already tested yes. somehow in Kubernetes, part of the Kubernetes test. So part of the core DNS test, then we need to, to test core DNS as a server, but not really as the DNS service of Kubernetes. I, I, right. will, confuse you. I, will, try to, I will try to make a schema for next time to, to not confuse you. Yeah, right. absolutely. So when we're testing Kubernetes, so from the Kubernetes side here, when we're testing, doing conformance tests of Kubernetes, we're not currently plugging in all DNS servers that could be used for Kubernetes and testing all of those. So we're right now we're only selecting one. That might be something that we're going to add in the future. So we go, we've tested DNS with this DNS server. We're going to test with core DNS. We're going to test with those. Right now we're selecting one and yes. then saying that that's working. But 
Yeah, and that then makes sense. For, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that makes sense. Right now, the default DNS service of Kubernetes is named kubedns, and I guess it is the that's one. That's right. That's, so soon, uh, for next version of Kubernetes, the default one will be core DNS. At that time, you just change this kube DNS by core DNS, and you run the same test, I guess. Absolutely. So from the standpoint of, of the cross-cloud CI testing, like what can we do and what have we done? We test, we've tested core DNS as a plugin. We've used, we've gone back and forth. Um, since we don't have no, nothing currently displayed from a dashboard side. So when we're looking at CNCF CI here, we're saying what is tested here, we don't have a way currently to display which DNS server is being plugged in. From the back end though, yes, we can we can select what's there. So build process and everything else, we could use either one. So we're good to go when it goes default to core DNS. And uh, the conformance test, as you were saying, part of what they do is actually validate that DNS works. So when that goes into place, it will be tested. Yes, okay, yeah, it's good. Okay. So let's let's focus on core DNS test and the way to my 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 main focus right now is when I want to add test I, I would like to consolidate with what you are doing so we do not make two branch and two two kind of um, two kind of CI test oh. so that's okay let's let's um look on your side I will uh, comment I will look with Chris however so we can explain you what we are doing right now and and make a plan so we can. Uh, have all our all our tests or the one that makes sense run inside this um, dashboard or well, dashboard. Yeah, so I think um, the next step would be what the what what happens what runs whenever you uh, get this PR that has the slash integration. What are the actual commands that are run? And that's I think what we would want to plug in here for our ED test and try to see if we can use those upstream at the way that you're running them now and see what may need to be adjusted if we can and if that makes sense. Um, and like you said, ideally we can use these rather than having two sets of tests. Yeah. However, you run your dashboard is running on after commit. It's not on PR. Oh, I'm wrong. That's right. It's after the it's after the commit. So whenever, by the time that you get to this stage, we've already done a build, the builds have passed, and we're now doing the integration test for the passing builds, the commit. Okay. So during the build phases when, so during this phase, whenever we do compiles and everything is where you would say unit tests would be. Um, run and if everything passed here then we're going to make those the compiled artifacts available and then we go through this stage and we would run those integration tests okay all right let, let me uh, look with on my side with Chris however so we make a small plan and we I will welcome back to you this week, I guess, I will send you an email or, or add to that. If I add to that issue, that's okay? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that's in chat. That was on the CrossCloud CI. That's uh, issue 23. That's um, posted in the Zoom, Zoom chat. Uh, hmm. Yes, 23. Yes, cloud, cost cloud CI is 23. Yes. Right. Okay, thank you very much. I'm happy that we can go ahead on that. Great. Excited to see it. <clears throat> Appreciate your patience. I'm glad that we're going to move forward again. And anyone have any other questions or comments? I think otherwise we're good to go on this meeting.
Okay, Lucina, was there anything else that you wanted me to go over uh, before we end this call? I may have missed a slide here. That's the one, yes. Uh, in progress, we are preparing the next release for the CI status dashboard V102. And that should include adding IBM to the cloud providers, adding FluentD to the projects, and updating the version numbers for the CNCF projects. So we'll post an announcement to the mailing list when that release is up and running. Okay, here's Francois, to thank you very much, but I have a last question. I see on the dashboard, um, uh, cncf.ci, for example, Core DNS is all right right now. It's me to get in, I, I guess, to, to see what's going on. The error seems to be related to um, something called a caddy instance. And I did see that there was a bug fix a couple days ago. Wow. My okay. thought is that it could be fixed when we update the version 106. Yeah. All right. Yes, it's fixed. Um, yes, we added the vendorization plus make file adapted. So yes, it should be in the 106. Okay. Thank you so much. We will... Um, add the 106 version and if we're still seeing any errors um, perhaps we'll ping you in the ticket and see if there's something else that has changed okay uh, one thing that is strange though but i can see because you have the 106 but anyway you have the head um so the bottom line should work no They have the same issue on the bottom line. I'm sorry, on which line? Um, you, see, you have two lines. One is a stable one. Oh, you updated 106 already. And the second one is, is the head. So this one is not working neither. Um, status. Oh, there is another issue. You have another issue with Caddy file. It's another one. Um, <laughs> Okay, I, w I will have a look at that because um, we don't see it, but uh, if you see it, that means we still have a tuning to have on make file. The make you are running is a make of core DNS. Yes, I see that, yeah. Yeah, we think that maybe something that y'all are running, uh, we ha we're not, haven't incorporated potentially it um, into our build process. This is what we had been using. It seemed to yeah. be uh, good. Oh no! It bombs out. File. Oh, I don't think it is a makefile dot release. It's makefile. Um, okay, let me verify that with the guy here with Core DNS and I let you know. Because my idea is no, it's just make file. Make my gmap build docker on them. Okay. I will look into, so it's very interesting. No, I was look, not looking on that, but I will now have a look more often on this desk. Thank you. Here's the make file release that we were using. 
Yes, but it is to make fight for releasing coordinates. So I think you should, I think, but I will ask the guy, you should use the make file itself. No, yes, make file. I'm under license, you have a make file, no? Um, we were using the make file release uh, to create a release that then we added added to uh, the container that we deployed. Well, maybe it's it, is a, it is the right thing to do, but in that case, it is our release that has not been updated. I know we updated the make file uh, very, uh, maybe last day or two days ago, I don't know. But some, maybe the- Yeah, let me see. Four day, you're right, four days ago for the make file and then the release was a month ago. So maybe yeah. they're not- They are not synchronized. Um, they're not synchronized, yeah. Yeah. Are we look anyway? So maybe you have the release, just those commands in merge to make files so that they're, yeah. they can call the make file um, task to do the builds and then create a release. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, and then the only other is 106. What was that? I mean, I will follow up with for this make file and, and see, uh, looks like we have not updated correctly all the make files. Okay. And you have, and you have the same issue. Okay. Well, good to see. <laughs> good to focus on that. Sounds good. Appreciate joining. Um, and if you have available time uh, for the next, meeting, it's March 13th. <clears throat> Besides um, reaching out to us, of course, we'll be collaborating just on the AD test. Thanks everyone for joining. Goodbye, thank you. Have a good one. Thank you so much, you too, bye-bye.